Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com, and this week I made this really cute little folk art style rabbit on a little wooden base. I just think it came out really cute, and it was really easy and fast to make. So if you're thinking about the gift giving season that's coming up pretty soon, you want to keep this one in mind. Uh, it was really easy to do. For the armature, I just used two scraps of cardboard, uh, one of them just regular corrugated cardboard, and then for the ears, I used really light cardboard from a cardboard from a uh, cereal box. I used aluminum foil and masking tape to fill in the shapes, really, really simply. I actually got more carried away than I needed to because in a folk art style, if you just make an egg-shaped head, two big black eyes and really long ears, you would actually have a recognizable rabbit and it would still be really cute. You don't need to put as many details on it as I did even. And then over the armature, I used this DAS product. The only reason that I used this instead of one of the do-it-yourself recipes that I've got on my website or instead of just plain old paper strips and paste only reason is that someone happened to mention that she really liked it when she put in a comment on my blog and I had never used it so I wanted to try it out. It is a really nice product and actually if you're only making a small project like this you don't want to make a whole bunch of them like I do. I mean I, I get a little carried away and I have the materials for making my do-it-yourself recipes in really big buckets. <laughs> so. Um, for that reason, it's a lot less expensive for me usually than buying something like this. But if you're only making one small project, or if you, well, gosh, this this cost me about ten bucks. It's a two pound, just because the one pound cost more. I don't know why. I had to buy it from Amazon because we don't have it locally. This would have made, oh, probably eight of these little rabbits. I don't know what I'm going to do with the rest of it, as a matter of fact. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that if you only want one small thing, buying a commercial product could actually be less expensive and it would take a lot less time uh, because you don't have to mix it up or anything than using one of the, the do-it-yourself recipes that are on my blog. Um, it's also kind of fun to experiment. Hey, I, I have fun with it anyway. Like I said, it went together really fast. You don't need to put as much detail on it if you don't want to. Um, the painting was really fast. It dried really quickly because I put it in my convection oven. And you could get this done in a day easily. And I think it just came out really, really nice. So let me show you how it was done. I wanted a wooden base for my rabbit. So I went to Lowe's and I went to the millwork section where they have feet for the bottom of couches and tables and stuff. They're called bun feet for some reason. I don't know why. And they come in different sizes and shapes as you can see here. I like the, the simpler one just because my house was made in the 60s and it just seems to fit better. And then I printed out the rabbit pattern. You can find the pattern out on my website. I'll put a link to it down below in the description. I kind of wanted to make sure that it would fit the base that it was on. And there's two different sizes on that PDF and I decided that I wanted to use the smaller size. Once it was printed out, I just cut around it and then I uh, traced around it onto a piece of corrugated cardboard and cut it out. Now what we need to do after that is to fill in the forms with our crumpled aluminum foil. I started out on the neck because that's going to be the narrowest part on the entire project. I do both sides using pieces of uh, foil that are basically the same size so it'll be symmetrical. And then you can burnish it as you go with any anything like a popsicle stick. I'm using a pen and that just makes it smooth and gets rid of the little bumpy parts that, that stick up underneath the masking tape. Once the neck was all done, I started filling in the lower portion. Again, I'm going really, really simple on this. I'm not trying to get any um, any bone shapes. I'm not putting any legs on it. No, um, no shoulder bones, no nothing. It's just really, really simple, almost a ball shape on the bottom. The face, uh, the widest part of the face is going to be the cheeks. So that's what I did first. Then you've got two balls on the front. Um, you can see those on the pattern. Now the last thing I did was make sure that there was an indentation for the eyes and that there was a little bit of a uh, heavier cheek below that eye indentation. We're not going to put the eyes on right now. We're going to do that in the final step. And I also burnished the aluminum foil all the way around, especially right in the front there. So I wanted a, a triangle 
right above those poochy parts, you know, the little balls at the front, right where they come together makes a triangular nose, and I wanted to make sure that that was really obvious uh, on my armature before I start adding the ears. The ears were cut out of cardboard, the thin kind from a cardboard box, uh, and then I kind of softened that cardboard by working it with my fingers and made it so that I could roll it up easily. The bottom portion, probably the bottom inch, is actually attached. It's not completely open at the bottom. So I went ahead and used a piece of masking tape all the way across to um, fill in the bottom portion like a complete cylinder and then the top portion of the ear is open. Now the one thing that I did before I attached the ears to the rabbit, I wanted to make sure that I would be able to kind of bend them around and put them in different shapes if I wanted to. So I made myself some wires out of the aluminum foil. Just made really long skinny ones out of, I think it's about an inch and a half uh, wide pieces of aluminum foil, folded them up, and then really, really tightly squished them together so that you'd actually end up with a long wire of aluminum. You could use aluminum uh, armature wire if you happen to have some on hand. It would do exactly the same thing. I just taped those around the entire edge of the rabbit's ears, and then I could uh, move them around and bend them and, and put them in any kind of shape I wanted. You could even have floppy ears if you wanted to. The ears can go on um, either going straight up like a, a really alert rabbit or they can go backwards like mine. And then I was done and ready to put on some of the DAS um, modeling clay. It went on really, really nice. I used small pieces, uh, working with small pieces. I've got a piece, I've got a little bowl of water there so that I can stick my thumbs in it and spread it out really nice and thin. And it's going on really smooth. So it was really fun to work with. Um, because there is a, a bolt <laughs> in the top of my bun foot that I'm using for the base, I just went ahead and poked it in um, just to make a, a nice indentation so I wouldn't have to get out the drill later and make that hole. Moving up, uh, really small pieces, putting it on really thin, and just kept going until I get to the tip of the ears. And then I used a table knife just to smooth off the clay. This is just the first layer of clay, and I, I wanted it to be as smooth as possible. And I wanted to just a, a really light line on that triangular nose and the little line that goes straight up and down below the nose. And that just helped to define it just a little bit. Before I put it in the oven, though, I wanted to make sure that I got those eyes nice and round. I got the lid of a pen, and I pushed it into the wet clay in the place where the eyes go. I tried to get them as evenly <laughs> spaced on, on each side as I could. Now this isn't going to be the final eye, but it is going to give me a round space for the eye when I put on my second layer. Once this layer was done, I put it in my convection oven at 170 degrees Fahrenheit and let it dry for about an hour. It's so thin, it really didn't take any longer than that. And then I was able to go back and put another paper-thin layer over the first one. The first layer was just a little bit lumpier than I really liked, so I just wanted to smooth it out a little bit more. I also wanted to make those eyes nice and round. So I put just a ball of clay right where those eyes go and then use my fingers to round it off kind of making buttons almost and then the very last thing I did was I added just a, a little triangular piece of clay right over that nose just to give it a little bit better shape and then the sculpting was all done it just went back in the oven again 170 degrees Fahrenheit with the fan turned on the first thing I painted was the base I didn't want it to be the uh, pine color I want it to be a little bit darker. You could actually use real wood stain if you happen to have some on hand. I just used a mixture of some black acrylic paint and a whole lot of water. It didn't cover it. It didn't make it like black entirely. It was so thin and so watery. It just kind of soaked in and most of the pigment stayed in those grains. So that was the first step. I let that dry completely and then I went back over it with a uh, some of my acrylic varnish mixed with the burnt umber and that gave me a really warm varnish on top of the black so I, I think it turned out really nice it's got a lot of interest in order to paint the rabbit I put white burnt umber and black together the the brown and black in, in very very small amount 
so that I came up with a really very, very light, warm gray. And I painted the entire rabbit with that and then let it dry completely. When the light gray was dry, I mixed up some golden acrylic glazing liquid, a very small amount of both burnt umber and black, and I also got out two paper towels. One was damp and one was dry. I'm going to be using this glazing liquid to add the, uh, the folk art type feel over the gray and to give it just a little bit more interest, make it a little bit darker. It probably would have been easier to control with this particular material. The, the DAS modeling clay is really, really soft and the first coat of gray did not completely seal it. So it would have been easier to control the glazing liquid if I had put on a layer of acrylic varnish before I added the glaze. But it still turned out okay. I just brushed it on and then wiped it off with a paper towel. I do this a lot with my sculptures. I don't usually leave on quite as much and uh, like I said that that was because the the clay itself was, was really absorbent and it just wasn't sealed as well as it could have been. It would have been a lot easier to control if it had been sealed a little bit better. So it brings out the details in the nose and it gives a, a slightly darker line around the eyes. Uh, makes a nice deep dark color right in the ear and I think it turned out really good. When the glaze was completely dry I painted the eyes black and then I let the black dry so that I could add one little spot of white to, to give it a little reflection and just make the eyes come alive. After that was dry, I used some hot glue to attach my rabbit to the base. And then I gave both the base and the rabbit two coats of a matte acrylic varnish. Even though this didn't take very long, it went together really fast. I didn't spend any time at all painting it. And yet it still came out really cool and it would make a really nice present for someone special. Now if you, if you make one of these and you really like making rabbits, be sure that you also watch my video series on the ballerina bunny. Because you might want to make something a little bigger and a little more complicated after you get this one done. And I also want to make sure that you come back over to the website and show off your rabbits because no matter what kind of material you make yours with, I still want to see them. The really fun thing about these patterns is that every single person who uses one creates a completely original sculpture. Every single one of them comes out different and I just love seeing how they come out. So come on back, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.